Today, I would like to discussing about uh, requirement engineering. Okay, one topic of introduction to software engineering. If you learn about software engineering, you will you have to learn this uh, topic. It's early beginning step or activity in software engineering. Requirement engineering is um, we can define as the there is in the process of process layer. Okay, one of process layer that we have to to learn, we have to study and then making understanding about it. The main, um, the main thing of uh, software requirement is uh, to get the real uh, requirement, for the need from the user, okay, need from the user. Uh, we can say that the need from the user that this is the system should follow and the system should develop based on that requirement. That is the main thing of the software requirement engineering. We want to gathering the requirement from, from the user and then we, we want to make the requirement to be more say the documentation and can, can be uh, notable, can be uh, verified, okay, can be traceable. So this is the, the thing that we, we want to discuss and that the thing that requirement engineering discuss about. To abstraction level of uh, requirement, we can say that uh, user requirement and system requirement. If you look at here, we have to, to abstract, abstraction le le level of requirement, user and system requirement. Both are sharing the same uh, common level, okay? Sharing the same things. User requirement, they are talking about what exactly uh, user need to from the the requirement from the system okay what the system should should do for the user this is we call user requirement when we want to develop some kind of uh, system or some kind of software so we had to uh, gathering and finding the information from the user what the uh, what the exactly user need from the uh, from the software okay you see you see user need that function user need this thing you see user need di that thing this is we call user requirement okay user requirement uh, identify in terms of um, high level speaking mean that in terms of human language understanding okay we call natural language but uh, system requirement they will focus more in detail about uh, how to develop the system okay how to develop the system they will add more detail a specific detail technical detail in system re requirement each level is suitable to different stakeholder group if we describe um, user requirement they should be described for someone who have not technical person this is we use re uh, user requirement to explain to them about the system that going to develop when we want to describe or explain uh, thing that to programmer or to analyze to analysis to pro to someone who going to develop the system we should uh, explain then in terms of system requirement because in the system requirement it include also detail about the system okay uh, user requirement okay user requirement user requirements Requirement are described in natural language, okay, natural language, possible with simple notations such as tables and diagram. The audience is uh, not interested in advanced modeling. We are not, uh, what we call, adding some kind of advanced modeling uh, from some as use case diagram, activity diagram, not something like that, but in terms of natural language, okay. Uh, audience interest in high level services and constraint some kind of um, what the what the user will get from the the system for all the software what thing that will make this uh, thing what the thing that will make the system happen okay this is uh, the audience of the user requirement for example as high level business stakeholder and manager because those group of people they do not they don't understand about the technical term mostly they are not understand about technical term so we have to explain express uh, the requirement of the system or the thing that system must do in terms of natural language okay not in terms of technical language okay for example as uh, in addition to publish form 
system x will contain private form that can only be accessed by authenticated users this is the natural language okay natural language that we express to uh, express to stakeholder or some kind of high level high level person high level person or general person to understand the thing that the, what the user requirement of the system system requirement okay define exactly what will be implemented okay this is uh, the, the exactly the de definition of requir uh, system requirement system requirement document contain model about services use cases behavior constraints business processes and etc form a contract between implementation team and uh, customer critical input to design develop development and testing activity when we uh, discuss about system requirement uh, it's about how to take the user requirement okay take the user requirement and add more uh, technical we say te te technical detail okay technical detail to be more specify what the system exactly to be implement this is we call system requirement so um, we can compare the system user requirement and system requirement are the same thing but expressed in different level of stakeholder and users okay this is example of uh, system requirement uh, this is uh, explained in terms of activity diagram one of um, diagram in UML format okay okay um, functional and uh, non-functional requirements okay uh, we can say that this is uh, the classification of uh, requirement the they they classify into two type of uh, requirement functional and non-functional requirement uh, functional is defined the system external behavior okay external behavior uh, how the system interact with its environment how it respond to input what output to generate and how to behave under certain condition okay we can say in short term that in short definition of the functional requirement is what the system must do and what must the system must not do okay the functional requirement not just only what the system must do but, but it's also about what the system should or must not do okay this is we call functional requirement uh, and and non-functional requirement is about quality attribute or, or constraint quality attribute may be some kind of example as security performance availability something like that there's a there is a non-functional requirement a technology constraint for example uh, the system should be implemented based on java base okay based on java programming language or the system must use IUP, okay, one one of process uh, we call software engineering process, IUP, rational unified process. This is we call non-functional requirement. There are many type of uh, non-functional requirement we can list it here. Uh, mostly they are about security uh, about usability about performance about space about environment context that the system developing okay some sometimes um, functional non-functional requirement can become the functional requirement okay sometimes for example uh, the system they are focused a lot about security so in the definition that we can we say that security is a non-functional requirement but when when one system is their careers about security so the security requirement will be functional requirement example as uh, this is an example from airline reservation system we say say that functional requirement as uh, a user can search for a flight if a flight is selected the user has to mandate to confirm booking or the flight will be released this is we call functional requirement.
okay it, it it directly related to the function the system will will serve the user will serve will serve to the customer is we call functional requirement but if you look back if you look another side of of the requirement we can say uh, functional non-functional requirement example here about airline reservation system there's a response time for a search transaction under peak load of uh, 10,000 users must be not exceed two second the throughput of the system is 100 search transaction per second this is about they're talking about speed they got talking about performance it's about a uh, non-functional requirement okay the functional requirement uh, this, uh, how the system will interact and respond to use okay but for non-functional requirement what are the quality attribute of the system okay this is the, the, the separate thing or classification of functional and non-functional requirement we can we can summarize that uh, uh, functional requirement is uh, the function that or requirement that exactly related to user okay it related user okay for example here a user can search a flight this is functional requirement non-functional requirement for example this one the system must be uh, available within this time of transaction uh, the system will must be handled availability for 24 hours for example this is we call non-functional requirement we can um, we can uh, how to qualify non-functional requirement customer all, almost never give a quantitative non-functional requirement they never uh, talking to you exactly what the non-functional requirement but they will express to you only about functional requirement only so when we do interview observation or questionnaire so we had to be consider this thing to make our question clear and then make our uh, what we call record clear about the, the answer from user and then we can extract the thing that user say to us and then the and then we can classify which which one is functional and which one is not uh, for example as here the, the response time of uh, re the response time for search transaction and the peak load of uh, 10,000 users must not exceed two seconds okay the, 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 the customer will not say like that but the customer will say the system should be fast when number of users is high okay this thing they say just like that I, I want I want to be I want I want my system to be fast when there are many students when, when when there are many users use my system okay but, but they do not say something in terms of number thousand user under something of millisecond something like that or another example as the they they, they will not say the throughput of the system is thousand uh, hundred search transaction per second but they, they will say the system must accept high number of search command this thing this is uh, we call um, non-functional requirement to qualify to classify when when you see some distance in mean that there are non-functional requirement in terms of this uh, context okay requirements such as i want a secure I want a secure system. I want a system that is easy to use, will surface all the time. This is the when, when you make interview, when the system engineer or analysis uh, requirement to get some uh, requirement, they will face this sentence. And then we can classify this is a non-functional requirement. Okay. How to uh, quantify non-functional requirement to read? Okay. For example, this one from that sentence, we can qualify that from the high, they need high performance of system, need high response, responsive, responsible time. This is we can classify that thousand user peak load to second response time, thousand uh, time per second throughput user must learn how to perform a search in operation after three attempt, something like this. Requirement engineering process trans uh, transform Wagyu from functional requirement into more quantitative form a non uh, non quantitative requirement are difficult to design and implement this one uh, when we when we want to identify which one is functional and which one is non functional we have to look at the sentence when we have when we interview or finding fact of the user so we have to look at the sentence they say and then we can identify this thing what is a 
the requirement about non-functional or functional. Okay. Analyze and design the architect uh, collaboration. Most of um, analyze and designer the, they must working together to get the real functional or not real uh, real requirement from the user. Okay, most of the time analyze and designer must collaborate to quantify non requirement and functional requirement. Also, designer designer know based on the system architecture if non functional requirement are feasible. Okay. Analy for example, as an analyze, consider a response time for two seconds, uh, quantifiable, clear, and unambiguous non functional requirement there is. Okay? This is the thing that when the designer and analyzer working together, they have to collaborate to, to learn what the exactly the, where is the functional and non -functional, functional requirement are. Okay? This is the process um, of the collaboration between um, analyze or designer to get non-functional requirement. Because why there are many uh, slides and many topics focusing about non-functional requirement? Because of non-functional -re non requirement difficult to identify than functional requirement. Okay. Um, according according to here. Um, for non requirement for non functional requirement first step of uh, collaboration is analyze quantify non functional requirement with customer okay go and study with customer that what exactly you need about uh, non functional requirement remember that the customer will never tell you the exactly non functional requirement to you so you have to look at the, the sentence they speak or they written or they re written answer to to you Analyze and designer validate the uh, non-functional requirement. Designer uh, do trade off and study feasibility of the non-functional requirement. Designer may create prototype and POC to uh, to identify or validate the non-functional requirement. Okay, this is the step of of, of working. Uh, step one, step two, thre step three, and four. Uh, talk to customer validate the. Uh, non-functional requirement trade off study the uh, feasibility this is uh, it can be available uh, can be developed or not about this uh, non-functional requirement and then uh, doing some kind of a prototype to test uh, the non-functional requirement okay Derive uh, the requirement. Derive requirements. Functional requirement can be derived from non-functional requirement. As, as I say, as we discussed that, some requirement, uh, some functional requirement can be non-functional requirement. Some non-functional requirement can be functional requirement. Okay, this is uh, can be they can synchronize based on their context. Okay, for example, as the system must be secure again unauthorized access. This is, uh, is implemented through user login and user registration ca use case. This is mean that the security uh, of the system is about non-functional requirement. But when, when the customer or user say that the system must be secure, okay, must be secure, again, the unauthorized access. So from this sentence is about non-functional requirement, it will be functional requirement. Okay. Requirement engineering process. Okay, uh, to to get the real requirement. Okay, we have steps to do. Okay, we have step to do to get the thing that what exactly the requirement will be. Okay, because we we have to follow some kind of process to make sure that the requirement will be valid, will be the exactly the user need, not based on our need. Okay, but based on user need. Okay. We develop the software based on the user need, plus with our experience, okay, but not based on our need exactly everything. Not based on our need, but based on the customer, okay, plus with our experience, okay. So, uh, requirement engineering process. We have um, four processes about um, requirement engineering process, plus with. Uh, the requirement management okay requirement management that managing all 
things about so requirement process, okay, including also requirement chain, okay, requirement chain. We have a requirement elicit elicitation, we have requirement analysis, requirement specification, requirement validation, okay. All steps you have to follow when you want to get or gathering the real requirement from the customer, okay. We start by the step, step one, step two, step three, and step four, okay. When we do requirement elicitation, okay, the introduction to the requirement, how to gathering the requirement from the user by many way of of gathering the information. Example as interview, example as observation, questionnaire, something like this. And then after we got all data, and then we will pass that data to the requirement analysis, okay to analyze the, the thing that we, we got from the user, okay, from the user. After we analyze, uh, we will we'll, we'll have some kind of understanding, okay, understanding of the requirement from the user, okay, and then to make, um, to make understanding and make clear in our team collaboration, we have to do some kind of documentation or in this one we call the uh, requirement specification we have to write down what the exactly user need one two three four five something like this we call requirement specification after we write down and then we make uh, what we call the repository of the requirement specification after that we have to make validation requirement validation to make sure it again that, that this thing this requirement is exactly thing that we have to develop okay the exactly that user need on the system this is we call requirement validation all this step is uh, managing by requirement management okay remember that there are many uh, many issues during gathering requirement especially uh, require requirement chain people always chain make make their chain always okay they need something that one today they need a tomorrow they need b okay after that next tomorrow they need a again this is we call requirement chain so we have to manage it uh, to make it more clear what the exactly user need okay and then make the agreement for the user if you want to develop the system okay if we look at here uh, a spiral view of requirement engineering process um, requirement elicitation will be on the starting point. Okay, starting point. Remember this one, spiral view of requirement engineering process. Yeah, I hope you still remember this one. This is a, uh, the uh, the engineering process. Okay, one of engineering process, uh, software engineering process. Okay, we call this is we call spiral. Okay, spiral model. Okay. Uh, if we match between, we, if we are matching between spiral model with the requirement engineering process, will it will look like this? Okay, we can see on the starting point we have a requirement elicitation, and then on the system requirement specification modeling we have requ requirement specification. On the requirement validation we have a feasibility study, prototype review, and then requirement documentation after we got validated uh, our requirement already. This is uh, we matching between spiral model with the requirement engineering process. Customer and users, okay? Customer and users. Um, this is the kind of two of stakeholders, okay? Stakeholders that related to the system, okay? One is customer, one is user. Okay, for example, this one, they are different term different meaning of customer and user for example here we say customer is sponsor of a system okay user is uh, used or interact with the system this is the de definition the chart, chart definition of the customer and user for example as uh, hr manager spon sponsoring an hr system uh, for example user can be hr employee will use the system okay this is um, uh, the de definition different term different meaning and uh, but the same system they are using between customer and user okay in in the process of uh, requirement engineering we have analyzed okay who responsible for the requirement engineering process analyze uh, we can say system analyze software analyze or 
any diff, uh, any name that plus analyze is a person who responsible for requirement in your learning process okay analyze define the what not the how okay analyze they define what the system should uh, should develop okay what thing that the system should develop what thing that should include in the system okay but they will not say how how to develop is based on the programmer okay developer or designer okay this one analyze we define what okay for example define function and non-functional requirement document model in system specification document or sis okay sis gather information from both customer and user okay analyze will do the gathering information from the customer or user who use the system and then create such uh, what we call define the function or define the functional or non-functional requirement okay analyze is not only passing uh, information collector observe user at work interpret user has a vision about customer re uh, request to be state um, analyze not just only uh, gathering information and then do the functional or non-functional requirement but they have to do observe user they, ha they have to go to study the, the behavior or observe the study uh, the user how they use the system okay how the they have to be they have to interpret to user to get the exactly the requirement from the user okay this is the the, the work of analyze stakeholders okay it's essential to identify stakeholders okay it's very essential because the stakeholder a person who will be a benefit uh, from the system okay any any person that benefit from get benefit from the system because stakeholders okay in um, entities that have interest in a project okay affect by uh, affected by or affect uh, project outcome okay inside or outside an organization it can be stakeholder can be a person inside one organization or outside of uh, the organization stakeholder identification part of larger stakeholder management okay analyze analyze identify and interact with stakeholder analysts will will work with stakeholder to uh, to identify what the system should be uh, developed okay should be developed okay the step one of um, doing requirement process is a requirement elicitation elicitation okay okay um requirement elicitation okay elicitation so the requirement elicitation is about uh, information discover and collection okay the how to collect uh, or discover information or data from the user or customer okay work with observe and improve method uh, sought after okay information is translated to information is translated into requirement in requirement analysis step okay the second step of the requirement engineering process okay the the main point of the requirement elicitation is to gathering the data and information from the customer and user and also from the stakeholder okay everything about about the system that we are going to develop we, you had to gathering the data as much as possible with many uh, way of um, data collection or get data gathering okay this one is a requirement elicitation and analysis process okay we have uh, first requirement discovery okay we have to discovery the requirement okay from uh, from the user or customer what the requirement they need okay what thing they need uh, to what thing they need from the system before we can analyze and develop that requirement for them okay requirement classification and organization we have to classify the requirement it can, it can be uh, functional or non-functional requirement if there are functional requirements so how many requirement how many functional requirement they need for the use system okay requirement prioritization and negotiation we have to prioritize not all requirement we have to develop at the same time okay because uh, there are maybe 100 or maybe 200 of requirement that we have to develop for the system or software that we have to prioritize which one is most important things and then we develop that thing first 
this is become requirement prioritization and negotiation and then the last step is requirement specification we have to make the clear about requirement what the exactly the user need in terms of uh, writing down make a document to be a documentation and then uh, write down what thing that user need okay one two three four five and then what how uh, wh what we say uh, what to develop for the for the system this is we call requirement specification there are many forms to to write down the requirement in terms of uh, requirement specification for example SRS system requirement specification that developed by Japan E something like that okay uh, the problem domain one of um, we we have two kind of abstraction level of of the requirement right we have user requirement and system requirement some you may plus domain requirement okay for example uh, domain requirement is related to the system or self software that you are developing it okay for example the system is about business so you have to the developer has to understand about business okay uh, on the systems about developing a software or system for aircraft so they have to understand about the aircraft uh, in the, in in something that they have to understand okay for example here they say the analyze the analyst must understand the problem business domain okay they have to go and study about the problem of business domain for example airline if they are doing about airline system so they have to study about airline system to understand the, the flow of their work, uh, the person who related to system or so on. For example, as for an airline re reservation system, analysts must understand flight rule, rules and regulation, common processes. This thing the 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 analyst must must understand, must to make understanding about about the system we call domain business. Okay, domain business. Knowledge must be accurate for domain which are new to analysts. Okay. They have to learn new thing or uh, from different domain, different knowledge. Okay. If they are if they want to develop the system for uh, we say uh, education, they have to understand about university, college, school, something like this. Okay, this allow the analyst to advise stakeholder perform trade off to to make uh, what we call um, risk analysis resolve conflicts resolve con conflicts uh, play the role of customer champion. Um, they if they understand the problem domain and then the analyst can do something more better to analyze and then to release the requirement for the system or for the software okay stakeholder identification part of stakeholder management process uh, stakeholder identification is a part of uh, stakeholder management process part of project management umbrella activity we have another uh, knowledge about project management um, uh, umbrella okay However, a domain expert analyze will almost always identify stakeholder. This is the, the main thing. They will work together. Okay? Regardless of the method of identification, requirement elicitation cannot commence before real, uh, relevant stakeholder are identified. So before um, they um, before we complete the requirement elicitation. We, we cannot complete the requirement elicitation without understanding the stakeholder of the system okay so analysts have to go and understand the, the stakeholder who is responsible who is related to the system uh, aka is a stakeholder here so this thing be the essential part of the requirement elicitation otherwise the requirement will be not complete or ambiguous okay we you will not get all requirement at that time so if you do not get the right requirement when you pass that requirement to analyze and design they will design and we analyze with the wrong requirement so they we will got function that user don't need it this is the the big issue okay if we we do wrong the gathering re wrong requirement okay There are many um, resources, okay, many resources 
that uh, we can get the requirement okay we can do interview okay we can do the documentation analysis or the existing document marketing survey or user questionnaire we can do questionnaire and observation facilitated meeting meeting with people and then asking them okay this is uh, the information sources that we can get the um, the requirement from user or customer okay we can do interview okay there are the step how to do interview okay step one step two what you have to prepare the questionnaire you had to uh, you had to know you had to make uh, what we call documentation and then validate again the the sentence that that sentence is valid or not okay you can do documentation analysis uh, the document that already exists on the system you, you you take it and then study okay this is we call documentation analysis observation or questionnaire send the questionnaire to user let them feel uh, the answer and then return to to you and then you analyze again and then you will you will you will got the requirement from that questionnaire there are many ways okay this is uh, the the various way of resources that you can do for gathering the requirement okay the second step is uh, we have requirement analysis okay after we got uh, what we got we have the information enough uh, about uh, gathering information get uh, have the document we have the we have we done the interview we have the we we did the observation already so we have to take all things all that information together and then analyze okay analyze do analysis A requirement analysis okay requirement analysis uh, customer and user need uh, deeply understand understood okay the we um, to understand the customer need and user need we have to uh, understand them deeply okay what exactly they need okay by from the interview information from the reservation information then we can do analyze okay we, we can do analysis of, on that document elicitation information is used to organize requirement okay this is the main uh, the thing of elicitation the first step of the requirement okay requirement uh, elicitation we use to um, organize uh, requirement identify ambiguous uh, conflicting and inconsistent requirement identify relationship between requirement ranking the requirement or prioritize requirement must be precise to en uh, enable validation cost estimation and implementation verification this one okay uh, we have we understand that um, requirement elicitation is used to uh, grouping the requirement or we can organize the requirement and identify something that we call ambiguous something that not sure this is not sure yet we have to make sure this thing is about what okay or conflicting okay we may have two requirement at the same time so we have to remove some kind of merge uh, the requirement to be one and then we have to ranking which requirement is more important than another or we, we, we say that prioritizing okay we are prioritizing Okay, in a, a, a com complete requirement, a requirement clearly states system behavior. The com we have to do the complete requirement to make sure that the requirement we uh, we are gathering is the the true requirement that user need or customer need. Okay, under all rank of input and output. Okay, under all possible constraint, we have to test this one. We have to test make sure that our the requirement is support for input and output that user say and user try to explain to us and then under all possible constraint that we have many uh, constraint right the limitation of the system it should be available uh, possible we say for example as a loan request is accepted if uh, the application age is over above 20 okay it's not complete okay it's not complete this one is some kind of um, what we say uh, when we got this sentence it's not complete yet so we have to find more detail about this thing for example they say what is the egg upper limit okay there is just only what we call they just above 20 right but they do not say what the limit upper okay 
from 20 to 30 or 20 to 100 or 20 to 200 there is no uh, what we call no answer on this one this is we call ambiguous okay how the system respond if h is out of rank for example 200 300 for example request reject or place in queue this one what we what we can do if we ask this one so you, if you want to design some kind of uh, gathering information by interview or observation or questionnaire you have to make the questionnaire clearly and then make the questionnaire that your user and customer can answer the what we call requirement they need otherwise it will be something like this okay it's something ambiguous and incomplete requirement consistent requirement a requirement does not conflict with any other requirement because consistent so it should be it should be not conflict with another requirement it should be when we when we have two conflicts uh, con conflicts uh, requirements so how we have to do one is remove or second is merge the requirement okay The requirement should be implementation free. Okay, should be implementation free. Requirement uh, specify the what, not how. Okay, this is we call. We when we say requirement specify the what, not how, is we call implementation uh, free requirement. Okay, how because uh, how is specified in the design activity, not in requirement activity. Okay, remember this one. Requirement uh, is about what the user need. Okay how is uh, how to design the, the requirement according to the username okay this is the the main different word between requirement and design okay requirement and design for example as the system must accept requests uh, regardless of the format and protocol of the sender does not specify pattern okay this, they specify what the system must do okay what the system must do but they do not specify what the technical term or what the technical specification the system that will be will be designed because the design it will be on design activity okay the requirement should be an ambiguous requirement okay each requirement can be interpreted in a single way one requirement one single way of expression okay an ambiguous Ambiguous requirement can be implemented uh, in various valid ways. Okay, for example, as an, an applicant can edit non-essential information of existing loan requests. This one is ambiguous. Okay, not essential because they do not edit non-essential. They do not exactly know what is non-essential. It should be some kind of information for user information, something like this: username or password or the first name information. This one. If we say first name, second name information, they will not be ambiguous. But if you say non essential information, something that ambiguous word, okay, ambiguous word. Do we do not know what exactly non essential non essential is, okay? That's why they say what is non essential information. Implement implementer may uh, interpret with this different uh, to what business user in, intended, okay? We we have to use the word and then we have to use the sentence that clear describe of the requirement otherwise the, your the requirement will be ambiguous okay not clear in another sentence the, the simple thing we can ambiguous is not clear okay difficult to be implement okay the requirement should be traceable okay traceable one um, traceable mean um, when uh, when when we do interview to user for example uh, we have to make that this interview is interview to who okay what time we interview what day interview what department of we, we did the interview okay so we can so we can we we can trace back to the requirement this is the requirement exactly from the user not from uh, the developer need to add okay Quantitative requirement, especially relevant, uh, relevant to non-functional requirement. Okay, um, it should be quantitative. Okay, something that count, countable. Okay, the requirement should be countable. Okay. For example, uh, they say that um, the system must be fast. Okay, we don't know what is fast. 
Okay, it should be something that measurable or we say that uh, can be countable. Okay, for example, from this intent, we say the, sen the system must be fast. This is uh, non functional requirement in terms of user. Okay, in terms of user, but we have to convert this one to be quantitative requirement. For example, they, we can convert to be the average response time for a uh, uh, transaction under peak load of 1000 concurrent users is one second okay this is we call definition of fasting okay definition of fast of the system okay achievable requirement okay requirement should be achievable we have something that requirement we cannot be achieved uh, in in perspective of software okay for example, uh, for example, as the system must have the same average response time for employee in the head office and employee in the other branches. This is um, not possible to achievable this one because they have to uh, what we call they have the different different branch, different location, okay, different location. So the speed will be different. So difficult to achieve. So when you get the ring the requirement, analyze the requirement to make sure that requirement is achievable, able to do it, okay? We can say that able to do it. Not just only any requirement from the user may not be available to implement. So we have to avoid this one. We have to tell to the, our user or customer or stakeholder that this, this requirement is uh, something that uh, out of uh, what we call, out of achievable, out cannot be implemented, okay? Cannot be implemented. Uh, the requirement should be testable, okay, testable or verifiable. Uh, requir require collaboration between analysis and testing team, okay. Uh, every requirement should be test or valid, okay, should be test and valid. To be test this one, for example, they say the system must be user friendly, for example, this one. So, they, they, you can say that this is not testable, uh, like uh, user friendly, we do not know the exactly what is the user friendly look like. So, it should be uh, analyst to transform this sentence to be such as the system must uh, provide the user with uh, tips control appear based on the menu selection thereby reducing the amount of display control something like this okay but mean the user friendly using okay we call uh, testable okay testable sometimes we get requirement from the user and then the user said i need this one okay i need this one i need login system Okay, I need login system, but they do not say what kind of login, how to, uh, how what we can, what what kind of login, how many user to have the login, for example, how many uh, how many form username do you you should include username or password or you can integrate with another platform, they do not giving like that, so the the main job of the analyst is to transform that sentence to be more clearly, okay, more clearly. Okay. Okay. To uh, how to achieve this uh, attributes? Okay. Actually, we are using uh, modeling. Okay. We are using uh, modeling to achieve that. Okay. By using notation, uh, drawing some sketch, uh, drawing some uh, sketching to to display to the user that uh, drawing maybe right now if you are testing via UI. We try to what we call display or drawing the prototype of UI and then let the user see this is thing that you really need this one something like that we call uh, the way how to achieve this attribute especially uh, for testing okay for testing by using notation or modeling okay modeling okay we have um, a term of uh, modeling okay to modeling uh, thing that uh, we get the requirement okay to actually, we uh, we use modeling to to guarantee effective requirement analysis. Okay, to guarantee that the requirement analysis is, is okay or not, is is correct or not. So okay, this one we call use modeling. Okay. Um, for example, this one we have many uh, condition. Okay, many many condition. Without modeling, uh, the analysis cannot help him or him or herself to identify the exactly what the system. Uh, should develop okay what the system should develop for we can say here modeling help analyze achieve this condition condition one and condition two here that we explain here for example interaction between 
environment service for different user segment information model behavior under certain condition where is group have various interests and background group must envision the system is from its own perspective this, this thing is become a problem to analysis okay so the the person who who did who doing analysis they have to have to have they have to do uh, modeling to to take this situation and model something to see in terms of um, uh, figure or picture or model or notation better than explain by text or paragraph okay now uh, the modeling describe the system from different abstraction level okay viewpoint for example uh, viewpoint to go different concern explain this different user different perspective okay high level user for manager they will see something or something that non did non technical term but for developer they will see something more detail this is uh, why they have to have modeling to explain to every group of uh, stakeholder okay stakeholder for example understanding understanding system behavior okay understanding beha system behavior behavioral model are used uh, analyze use model to better understand and refine the system analyze use model to communicate with stakeholder group interested in behavioral aspect okay model also become the basic of uh, design activity okay model also are used to design assistant tests okay they're using model to um, to help design in design activity okay because uh, when you try to design architectural design low level design or ui design you need to have some kind of energy design or energy model from the requirement that is responsible by the analysis okay responsible by analysis requirement specification okay refinement specification the the process of production this is the requirement of specification is the process of production review evaluation and approval of the system requirement specification document okay there are there are many format of uh, requirement specification that we when we write down especially requirement specification is we have to write down in some kind of form okay with some kind of form Document content user and system requirement requirement specification step is closely to related requirement analysis but in analyze they just analyze the thing that will be should be in the correct way but in requirement specification they have to make sure that the thing written and then they make understanding for uh, for the whole stakeholder including uh, manager user developer okay there are many ways of um, uh, to write the system requirement specification. Here we have, uh, for example, here we have natural language. Okay, natural language just say that I want that thing, I want this thing. That's that. This is natural language. But the problem of uh, natural language is uh, it easy to say but difficult to analyze. Okay, like uh, when uh, when you tell to your friend that. Um, what what you want to eat okay what you want to eat so it's difficult to analyze right you are using feeling than the, um, systematic okay better you have to use another thing that can be more systematic for example you can use a structure natural language or graphical notation or mathematical specification okay for example here the the famous one we can say that most of um, uh, nowadays, if they are based on the modeling, they are using graphical notation. Okay, graphical notation. For example, here they are using UML standard. For example, you are then using use case, use case diagram or sequence diagram or class diagram, something like that. This is uh, graphical notation by using graphic to represent uh, your the system requirement specification or. Some some may curious about programming. They may use design description language, okay, by using a programming language to des describe it. Uh, what we call system requirement specification, okay. But uh, in this class, uh, in our class introduction to software engineering, 
we will implement this one graphical notation by using UML standard okay such as use case uh, sequence or activity diagram and so on this is the thing that when we when you want to do uh, requirements uh, system requirement specification you have to have introduction about the, 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 the project okay overall description model validation reference and appendix the, the documenting about the, the requirement this is the outline of thing that when you want to do documenting about the uh, software that you're going to develop you have to have introduction okay the introduction can be include purpose scope definition our, our description user requirement constraint assumption something like this model can be include viewpoint such as data function behavior use case diagram class diagram activity diagram and use case something like this validation can be um, uh, acceptance test test case uh, that verify the, the requirement that valid or not traceability or not something like this and then reference to to the, the document where you interview where you did when you did the this, uh, observation where something like this this is we call reference uh, appendix some plus data about the document uh, especially so, uh, system requirement specification okay this is the standard one that uh, that released by IEEE standard for requirement documentation IEEE 1998 1998 okay 1998 this is the thing that when you want to do requirement document this is the thing that you must include in your document okay or you may include okay you may include they should be include preface introduction glossary and uh, user requirement definition system architecture uh, system requirement specific specification system model system evaluation append appendix and index okay this one this is the structure of uh, requirement documentation when you want to do the requirement okay the thing that you have to follow and each step each chapter there are detailing okay detail about it okay for example uh, in system requirement specification there are detail in this chapter for example you had to include some kind of user requirement functional and non-functional requirement system modeling you have to include uh, data flow object modeling data modeling semantic ER diagram something like this this is uh, another detail that uh, that we had to include for each chapter okay and the last step of doing requirement engineering is uh, requirement validation okay validation the, the the main point of requirement validation is finding potential problem okay for what for reduce the cost okay for reduce the cost of later discover when you when we uh, finding some requirement we when we define the requirement already we had to validate the requirement that make to find the potential problem that this in this requirement there are some any kind of problem before we we move the requirement to another step that is design okay this is the, the the last step of the requirement engineering there is requirement validation to make sure that our requirement or the system requirement is uh, no problem okay no problem there are many there are many techniques used to uh, validate the uh, validate the requirement okay formal review for example take review okay or, or do prototyping do the uh, example or mini mini uh, sample of system that we are develop based on the requirement to test that the requirement is okay or not or test case okay designing acceptance test uh, to test the, the requirement that is requirement is fulfill the um, fulfill the user need okay we have according to the requirement process we have one thing that is uh, cover all process there is requirement management okay requirement management because uh, because of um, change management always happen to the system okay change management always happen to the system it always change to the system for example today you need a but tomorrow you need b this is we call change okay you develop a system and then the change is always occur so you cannot be complete you cannot be 
finalize the the project so you had to make sure that the the what we call chain is under control the this this un, this chain of requirement is under requirement management okay under requirement management for example um, we use version control that uh, to to control the chain management okay for example today is about we're talking about uh, about uh, requirement A okay but tomorrow requirement requirement A change to be requirement A plus A for example we have to have something that can be tracking the requirement chain okay we can use which and control okay because which and control can um, can what we call can versioning okay versioning the requirement same as versioning the code okay for example as git and github something like that okay You look at here, uh, requirement management is uh, it cover all all part because it, uh, requirement management can be chain management can be appear on any step. For example, requirement elic elicitation, requirement analysis, requirement specification, or requirement validation. Okay, this is requirement uh, management. Okay, in summary, okay, software. Uh, requirement engineering is a uh, first core activity of software engineering okay uh, requirement we have uh, requirement initialization okay we have requirement analysis we have requirement specification we have re uh, requirement validation requirement management this is the the, the steps of uh, the the phase of requirement engineering okay requirement elicitation is about information discover okay information discovery and collection collecting the information that related to the software that we are going to develop. This is we call requirement elicitation. Okay, there are many ways of um, doing requirement elicitation by interview, right? By observation, by questionnaire, or by uh, what we say um, by um, reading the the existing document. Okay, and after we got uh, information. Uh, enough and then we had to do the requirement analysis okay we say the detailed understanding of requirement from that interview from that so various technique of uh, gathering the information we had to take that information and then study again make understanding about the requirement and then we say and then we modeling that requirement by by using a notation figure something that simple figure explanation and then after that from that thing we have to take all the information and analysis process and the output of analysis process written the requirement in some kind of format okay in some kind of format or some kind of document for example as for example as uh, for example as uh, item e format okay system requirement specification document is created review and evaluated and approved this is the the process of requirement specification everything that you uh, you analyze should be written down in in the what we call in the requirement and identify that this is a system requirement this is user requirement this is a functional and non-functional requirement after that we have to validate the requirement that we we, we got we got from elicitation analyze and specific specification Requirement validation is formal validate of requirement to make sure that the requirement is correct based on the context of the system we are going to develop. And then requirement management is about changes are control and tasks are planned. This is the main thing of the requirement management. Because changing is always happen. So we have how to manage the change, how to control uh, the thing that happened during the process this is the we call requirement management okay for example as uh, if we are using paper based uh, what we call documenting the requirement we will face a lot of problem uh, especially in synchronization between one person to another so we can solve this problem by using requirement management such as we use git or github okay so even even where you stay we can synchronize each other okay we are uh, vision control for example this is the summarize of the requirement engineering for today okay 
this is more resources that you want to learn more about requirement engineering okay requirement engineering because this part is a uh, one subject you can learn okay one subject you can learn for example this book requirement engineering fundamental okay software engine software requirement okay third edition this is uh, the the two of books that i recommend to you if you want to continue about uh, requirement engineering fundamental if you face some kind of problem about uh, requirement engineering during the our project for example web application of grant web application so this is can be your um, what we call reference to read more okay next is uh, we will discuss about um, requirement modeling okay Re requirement modeling how to after we have the requirement already how can we model modeling the requirement okay to use some kind of notation to use some kind of graphic okay we will discuss um, uh, we will discuss uh, structure analysis and also object oriented analysis okay